and Riley is Mary, the mother of Jesus. So that's how that goes. Thank you to you for doing that. Welcome everybody. Let's say uh, let's uh, turn to our hymnals now before we begin for our opening hymn, 803, When I Survey the Wonders Cross. And let's stand and begin with this uh, opening hymn, When I Survey the Wonders Cross. Some fell on a rock, and as it grew up, 
it withered for lack of moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. And as he said this, he called out, If you have ears to hear, then hear. Now, we think about Jesus and all his followers, and some of them were able to hear and listen, and others maybe not so much. Let's turn to our next hymn, 623, and let's sing Rock of Ages, 623. <laughs>
Just look at Maggie here. She's a perfect example of someone whose life has been completely turned around by Jesus. Tell us, Maggie, what was your life like before you met Jesus? And how did Jesus change your life? Okay, I don't suppose you've ever known anyone who was possessed by a demon. Well, imagine being tormented by a demon that fills you with hate or fear. Then imagine having seven such demons controlling your emotions and thoughts. It is a blackness that you feel can never be free of. It is a prison within your mind. Oh, that's horrible. It must feel like you're going crazy. I really thought I was crazy. There were angry thoughts and angry voices in my head all the time. I couldn't control myself sometimes. My parents locked me in a room when I got my spells. So they, they tried to take me to the doctors and healers who gave me potions and magic charms, but nothing helped me. In fact, it made it worse. Did your parents seek out Jesus, or did you just have to come to your town? My parents did not believe Jesus was a true healer. They had given up on looking for anyone to help me. But then some of them, some friends told them what's the harm of taking her to Jesus. Maybe he can help, but if nothing changes, nothing is lost. So when Jesus was in our town, they went and asked him to come up to our house. I'm sure he was happy to come. He always accepted our invitation to come to people's house and help them. Were you excited to see him? My first reaction to him was fear. I thought he was going to torment me by awakening all the spirits at once. I wanted to run as far away as possible. I have seen people with evil spirits she shriek and cry out in anguish when he came into the room. They often said, What do you want to do with us, Son of the Most High God? Leave us alone. I was fighting and struggling the whole time. But Jesus just stood over me and said in a soft voice, come out of her, and suddenly they were gone. That's it? He just said that one thing and they were gone? Didn't he have to do the battle with the demons? I guess he just had the power to send them away. And do you, do you know what? They have never bothered me since. I felt so free and clean. It was wonderful. And that's when I first noticed the kindness in his face. Wow, that's an amazing story. He really changed everything for you. <coughs> what I don't understand is why Jesus could help other people and show so much power over demons, but when the soldiers arrested him, he couldn't stop them. Jesus was not supposed to breathe. He was supposed to be strong and save us. Maybe he let them arrest him. Do you really think that they could have arrested him and held him and even killed him if he hadn't let them? There is no earthly power that could fight against him and win. But why did this happen to him then? I'm still trying to figure that out. But don't confuse what has happened to him with weakness. Think back to the beginning when John the Baptist said the words, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. That was a strange thing to say. How is Jesus the Lamb of God? Lambs are used for sacrifices. The blood of animals brings atonement for sins. A perfect, unblemished lamb was used as the Passover sacrifice when our ancestors were saved out, saved out of Egypt. The blood of the lamb was put on the doorposts of each house. That is what saved our people from the angel of death. I admit that when I heard John the Baptist's words, a chill went through my spine. It just confirmed to me that Jesus was here to die. He was going to be our sacrifice. Maybe the only way to save us was to provide a perfect lamb for the sacrifice. Are we such great sinners that Jesus needed to die for us? Do you remember, Peter, that time when you said he would lay down his life for us? Greater life has no one than this, than to lay down his, friend, his life for his friends. You are my friends. I remember now. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I guess I am also one of the broken people that needed his help. Welcome to the club, Peter. All right, now it's time to sing a song. With the help of our, our youth here, the song is above all. And I think we'll
signature twice. So. pursue 
uh, our life's purpose every day. Whatever we're doing at work or in school or in our families, that we would do so in the name of our Lord and we'll do it with your power and strength. That you, you would know that we have a purpose and a meaning in life and that there's something for us to, uh, to do in your name for your glory. And that you called each of us to be your followers and to be your disciples and to be your, your servants. And so we ask you to open our hearts for that. And we know that's why you came into the world, to, to give your life for our sake, to lay down your life, to break the bondage of evil and of Satan and of sin and, and to uh, release us from any prisons. And so we thank you for that. I ask your blessing on each person here tonight and on our families and loved ones. May those that are feeling well uh, or sick and struggling against something tonight be, be healed and restored. And everybody that we know has a need, we just lift them before you uh, to, be, to be brought to health and, and strength again. We ask that you would guide us in serving the needs of those around us and especially for those who need to hear the message of Jesus' love. Help us to be uh, a voice of the gospel to them. And as all this we ask in the name of our Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks again for coming out tonight, and uh, thank you for all the help make this evening a real special evening for the food and the fellowship, the youth and the parents and all of help bring this about. Uh, music. I will be uploading the video of tonight's service, so I hope it turns out okay. If you if you want to watch it again, maybe by tomorrow or sometime in the next 24 hours, you'll probably find it on our, on our YouTube channel that we've been streaming from our saviors. But it's pretty much for both all, church, all the churches, just because that's the one streaming site we have. But you're welcome to watch it there, and uh, I'll try to get the link sent out next next day or so. All right, let's close with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hymn 793, 793, Be Thou My Vision.
Thank you.